Hey, good afternoon, everybody. And it's the Kings and the Pelicans. We got a lot to talk about with Jerry Reynolds coming up in a moment. Go back and look at last night's game and the uh, absolutely tremendous game against the Golden State Warriors. Already good news for Sacramento. No Zion Williamson. He's going to be out at least two weeks, which means that the Pelicans advance. They won't have him for the first round against the Oklahoma City Thunder. And again, Ryan, we keep on talking about the Kings this year. They've had the advantage and had the table set up so well when key players are out. You know, but they haven't been able to take advantage, but they got a good opportunity on Friday. No, and if they can't do it on Friday, just write the Pelicans off. <laughs> Six times in a season is tough to swallow, but Grant, you're right. The chips are right in the right place for yep. the Pel or for the Kings. All right, let's get to Jerry Reynolds. Jerry, great to have you on here on this uh, 4 o'clock show on this Wednesday. Let's first of all go back and look at last night's game. What impressed you the most about last night's win? Well, I, I thought uh, the defense was outstanding, especially at the guard line and uh, – you know, I thought that, you know, Steph Curry had to work hard to get a bad shot even. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, without Steph Curry being a focal point of the offense, the Warriors become very vulnerable. And that's exactly what happened. You know, we talked about it at the half last night that he would need to really get going. And he, he did uh, to a degree, but not enough to. So his defense. And uh, I thought the, the, the other thing that struck me was the three, three guys – you know, not not star. De'Aaron and Domas did what they do. You know, they had their game. But Keegan and Harrison Barnes and Keon Ellis really stepped up. They had more than you had any right to expect from any any of those three guys. And and to me, that was the difference. Ryan. Yeah, and in some ways, too, Jerry, I would say that the injuries happening when they did, it gave the guys some time to kind of get it some run together and be ready for this. So that was a positive. The other thing I'm looking at is offensive rebounds. This team quietly has been a very good offensive rebounding team and keeping teams off the offensive boards as well. So if the Kings can get second and third opportunities, that exponentially ups their chances in any game they play in. Yeah, you know, you're getting more guys trying to get them. I always said last year when the when the, the Kings got beat in the playoffs, they, you know, Domas got a lot of, uh, you know, criticism for, for the fact that the team got out-rebounded so badly. And and he deserved some of it, but he averaged 11 rebounds, which was only one and a half less than his average. But the problem was nobody else was rebounding. You know, but Keegan yep. has become a good rebounder. Yep. Uh, and your guard line rebounds very well. I mean, uh, De'Aaron has become a very good rebounder, and of course, Keon Ellis. So, uh, to me, that's you got four or five guys that are in position to offensive rebound. That that'll help your offensive rebounding. Jerry, let's flash ahead now and look at Friday. Okay, the Pelicans have beat the Kings this year with their old lineup before the injuries. They beat them with their new lineup just last week. They beat them without C.J. McCollum. They beat them without Zion. They beat them without Brandon Ingram. So they beat them in every possible way, both with Herder as a starter and with Keon Ellis as a starter. So you're Mike Brown. What can you possibly do differently that will affect the game and help you get a win on Friday? Well, I do think that uh, the, the Kings defense, if they'll bring that kind of intensity and, and maybe take C.J. McCollum out of the game, now, it's, uh, you know, and Ingram has been injured. He's not in himself, to be honest. Now, I, would, I don't know. Yeah, how he didn't look good the other night against the Lakers in his return. He did not look good in 21 he minutes. He didn't look comfortable, and he wasn't in there at the end, right. which tells you something. Man, of course, without Zion. So, now Murphy's Murphy. He's going to make shots if he gets them. But, but I do think the matchups are a little better than this time around. I mean, you couldn't really match up with Zion, and I thought – uh, just take a step further. I thought Coach Brown may have made a mistake in that game. He started early by double teaming Valanchunas, and and, and then playing uh, Zion head up by by uh, Murray. Stupid. Yeah, it made no sense. I mean, because uh, Valanchunas, he's a very good player, but if you play him head up, he'd probably get fifteen. If you double him, he probably gets twelve. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's not he's not a guy to beat you. Yeah, uh, he, he's a good player. So I I, I'm, I I know they'll have learned something from that, and then they did as the game went on. So uh, then the other thing, I mean, the Pelicans, there's no way 
that they can come into this game and really be take the Kings as serious as they should take them. You know, it's a it's almost a trap game, I think, for yep. the Pelicans. And it's and I hope even with the season on the line, Jerry. Well, the effort should be there, but I think human nature being what it is, you know, I mean, no, you're you're exactly right. You're saying, well, you're coming in to go to the next level. Yeah, they they're they're coming in thinking we gotta we gotta get through this game so we can get to Oklahoma City, uh, and I think, uh, but I think it is a little tougher for them to get mentally ready to play than it is the Kings. The Kings have everything. They can say, hey, we owe these guys something. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, Jerry. Um, the other thing that I would add is they cannot allow the Pelicans to make a living outside the three-point line at all expenses. I don't care if you play everybody on the bench. Drive them off the three-point line. They're shooting 45% on the season in the five meetings. Yeah, you know, with McCollum and Murphy, uh, I mean, these guys, they're, they're they're shooters. And Alvarado normally is a pretty good shooter, too. He wasn't last night. But, but yep. the, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I, I think that uh, without Zion, they've got nobody that consistently can beat you inside the paint. I mean, Valanciunas is a pretty good shooter himself. But, uh, you know, McCollum, I worry about McCollum and Murphy the most. Are the two guys that I would really focus on, and and I think the guard line should be able to put enough pressure on McCollum, and then uh, Keegan on Murphy. I, I think he could hold him to a reasonable, reasonable amount. Jerry, what about the psyche of the Pelicans now, knowing that they're going to have to do this not only Friday, but if they win in the first round without Zion Williamson, and everyone in the locker room knows that Brandon Ingram's not back to where he was yet. So talk to me about that aspect of this game. Well, it'll really be a challenge for the coach. Now, I mean, you know, this team, this is a team that won 49 games with Ingram out a lot, with Zion out a lot. So yeah. Used to, I mean, if there's ever a team that's used to playing without a star, it's them now playing without two. That's, uh, that's something altogether. And, uh, you know, I think Coach Green will say, you know, the old next man up and this, that, and the other, and, and I agree with that. It's just kind of like the Kings. Uh, I think the difference for the Kings is that, yeah, it's next man up, but here's the thing. If if you're Mike Brown, what you've really done is telling, okay, starters, you're going to play 39 minutes till 35. <laughs> and, yeah. and and in playoffs and play in, you got rest, so you can do that. There's, these and guys Ryan – yeah, I'm sorry, Jerry. I yeah, thought you were done. Yeah, these sorry. guys aren't going to die playing 39 as opposed to 39. No, no, no. Yeah. And Ryan, Brandon Ingram is playing. I think we should point that out. We don't know how effective. I would say this, you know, coming back and getting some rust off and now having three days off between games may help him. So we may see a different version of Brandon Ingram who's killed the Kings. Yeah, he has killed the Kings. I'm kind of in the camp that all the pressure, though, is on the Pelicans. If you look to, and take a step back, it seems like the Kings going into it are going to be the looser of the two teams because this would be a massive collapse. But I'm not sure what you do on Brandon Ingram because he's been that hybrid. Uh, maybe you throw a little more Keegan on him or you, you try to boss him around a little bit. But that's a tough one to me, Jerry. How would you coach that? Well, I, I do think it's a problem if he's able to play and Murphy's playing. Keegan could only guard one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, and so I don't know with, with the Harrison Barnes matchup, just exactly where you would go there. At, uh, so it, that would be an issue. If if Ingram's at his best, it, it, it will be tough because it, between he and Murphy, I don't think they can match up with both of them. Well, and again, with if, if you were told me that Zion Williamson was going to be playing, I would give the Pelicans an 80% chance of winning this game. I really mean that. He's just an un, unstoppable force. We saw what happened last week in Sacramento. He toyed. He absolutely toyed with the Kings. This is a, a gigantic – let's not let's – not, you know, undervalue that this is a huge break for Sacramento. But, Jerry, right before you came on, the Kings have had these type of breaks all season, and many times mm -hmm. they have not taken advantage of them. Yeah, that, that's that been the biggest disappointment. You know, they've had bad teams with a lot of injuries and, and coming off back-to-backs and lost them. So uh, you hope that uh, last night's game was, a you know, a basically more of a reality of what we can expect. The next one don't know that. You know, i got to say this about yeah. Zion. I was watching a Laker game last night, and uh, LeBron James took a charge oh. on Zion, 
And I'm telling you, Zion knocked him around like a rag doll. Yeah. And I guarantee you, I mean, and LeBron got up and, and you know, he's thinking, that ain't never happened to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just got yeah. hit by a truck. I, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're still wiping up the sweat mark from Keon Ellis the last game against the Pelicans. He tried to take a charge too, and it was brutal. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know how you, you know, the only way to take a charge on Don if you don't know it's Zion, you know. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think it would be like taking a charge with Shaq. I think the Kings are going to play well on Friday. I really do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just get a feeling they're going to have a very good game. But if the Pelicans are making their threes, it's still going to be very difficult for the Kings to win because, as Ryan said, they've been shooting at a very high clip. You know, and if they if they're able to do that on Friday, I still think they'll win because the match. It, it, you know, Brandon Ingram is playing. It's not even the injury report. We just don't know how effective. But if Brandon Ingram can be effective, okay, they're still a very good team, and they still present matchup problems for Sacramento. No, exactly. And like I say, that those forward matchups I, I don't like for the Kings, and that that worries me a little. I, I I'm just hoping that Ingram isn't a hundred percent, and that it, with the Kings' defensive guards, if they can just take McCollum, if they can take him out of the game, then I like the Kings' chances in this. Yeah, game. I really do. I'm cautiously. I mean, I know what's happened in the past, but I I, I can see. You know, certainly no Zion. Uh, uh, the Kings can match up pretty darn well. Yeah, and the the Pelicans give up a ton of three point attempts. Twenty ninth in the NBA, at giving up threes to their opponents. So if the Kings are hitting in transition in a high clip, or at least at a clip like last night, to me that changes the entire landscape of the matchups. Because going into it, they're only shooting thirty two percent. Yeah, uh, but, but and I agree with you, and that's why I still don't like the numbers in this game. Because the Kings' two best three-point shooters are not on the floor. Okay, they're hurt. And I don't know, and I and I mean this, I don't know if the Kings have enough offense to beat New Orleans if they continue to shoot the way they have in the previous meetings. That, that's what yeah. concerns me. Fox, you know, you, your, your guys that you're – Keon Ellis and De'Aaron Fox, right? They're a box of chocolates when it comes to three. Okay, and and Keegan Murray's been that way. Harrison Barnes, that can't happen on Friday. All these guys, as you said, particularly in transition in their open shots, have to hit a decent percentage from three, or the Kings won't win this game. Well, it, it's going to be a three point game. Uh, you know, they, both teams depend on that. They, they that's why they win. That's why they lose. And so, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, obviously, if Keon Ellis can keep shooting threes like he's been shooting them. Uh, it'd be a tremendous advantage. Yeah. You know, he's a 42 percenter since he's been in, in the uh, lineup. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but that's where it's going to be. I think both teams will get uh, threes. I Like I say, I think the best chance for the Kings is try to take away uh, one of their key shooters from getting open threes. You know, just take something away, a key guy mm-hmm. like McCollum. You know, get him get him out of the scoring load somewhere or another. And I'm not sure that the Pelican can score, can score enough. How about Adam? He said, I, I'm going to New Orleans. I got a lower level row eight ticket for under $200. That arena is going to be empty. It's not going to be empty, but here's the deal. New Orleans is, that's a bad arena and it's a bad crowd base. They don't support their team. I personally, I've said this for years. They don't deserve to have a team. There are too many other markets like Seattle and other cities that deserve to have a team. That city does not deserve the Pelicans. They have not supported them. Uh, It's a bad look for the NBA. We used to go there even when the Pelicans were good, and Jerry and I would look around and go, where the hell is everybody? People don't go to support the team. So the arena won't be empty because it's a big game. But, you know, the fact that you can, on 48 hours before the game, get a ticket on the second-hand market in row eight on the lower level for under 200 bucks tells you all you need to know. Yeah, well, it's one of those things where it's really a poor city for people. You know, yep. I mean, it's, it's, and it's a football town. It's a, yeah, I mean, and of course, football, you could sell 70,000 season tickets in Reading, yep. California. I mean, you could put an NFL team anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, as Green Bay has proven. But anyway, yeah, they, they, yeah, it's, you know, it's just not a good basketball town. And they, and so it, but I think it'll be pretty full, uh, you know, for, for a game like this because it will be, it will be. But, but but I mean it's like like you and I remember I mean where they always got a kick that announced 
fourteen thousand when you can at, at best it'd you be can them on your fingers. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I got off on a tension there, but I just wanted to let Kings fans know, hey, if you really are, uh, you know, you want to do something fun this weekend, get on a flight and go to New Orleans and get a, a ticket on the secondary market. Um, I, I, I look at the dynamic of this game. And again, if you look at all the meetings that they've had this year, the Pelicans really have not been healthy when they played Sacramento, they, they, as you said, Jerry, they, it seems like every time they play the Kings, they're without, you know, a key piece. They didn't have CJ McCollum for the first two games and they still kicked their butt. They didn't have Brandon Ingram. You know, they didn't have Zion Williamson for a game. I mean, so you're right. This team won 49 games with a variety of players out of the lineup. That does tell you something. It really it does. Really, yeah, it does. And I mean, really credit to coach green. I mean, this team, yep. Pel- I mean, I really think the Pelicans, when they've got all their pieces and healthy, they match up with the best teams in the league, uh, you know, but that just hadn't been the case for them. And I'm not sure it ever will be. I think, you know, Ingram and Zion, I'm not sure you're ever going to see a 70 a game season out of either one of them. I'm really disappointed. I wasn't invited to lunch today, guys at Bennett's. They had and, the mushroom uh, soup, Napes. They had oh, the mushroom soup. Killing me. Uh, I know. Did you go to the Roseville location? We did. We right, did. Uh, and yeah, Brian was there. I'm glad, I'm glad you saw Brian, but it was great to have you guys there. And I'm sorry that I was not able to join you. Uh, but next time, uh, again, if you go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com, you can make a reservation, check out the menu. Prime seafood and steak at Bennett's. So, Jerry, uh, what did you have today for lunch? I had a Caesar chicken Caesar salad. It was great. And, uh, you know, it, definitely it was a case where Brian came by and said, boy, it's a good thing Grant in here. This will be more, a lot more pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. That's true. Hey, we had to you know settle him truth, down. The truth oh, is the uh, truth. Like, I, you know, listen, the <laughs> truth is the truth. So, Rhino, no, what did great. you have? Uh, I went with the Grant Napier number two, which is a cup of the mushroom soup and the yep. chopped salad, the steak chopped uh, salad. I love that. Oh, yep. The redfish or the chopped salad is my lunch go-to items. But with the mushroom soup there, oh. uh, that is the must, you know? So have I'm happy you guys went there for lunch. And again, I'm sorry I missed you folks. Uh, just go to Bennett's Restaurants, uh, dot com. All right. So what what other aspect of this game, Ryan, do you think you, you already mentioned what you think is the key stat? And I think you're spot on based on the previous five meetings. What, what else do you see in this game on Friday? Mike Brown, Mike Brown, Mike Brown. On Monday, he was asked about differences in the offense and what he was or they should expect from the Kings before the Warriors matchup. And he said last year, he was calling a ton of set plays. This year, it's been mostly the guys. And so last night, Jerry and I talked about this, and Jerry's mentioned it as well. It was apparent there was a lot of set plays going on. Guys were getting downhill. There was more pick and rolls. There was more motion. So I think you've got to see exactly the same heading into New Orleans because you didn't see that in the first five meetings. Yeah, and I also have a problem here with Rich. Rich says I'd fly to the Big Easy if my wife didn't have me on a plane to Istanbul on Sunday. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, help me out here. The Kings play in New Orleans on Friday, right? Right. Okay. So the flight from New Orleans to San Diego, assuming that you can go nonstop from New Orleans to San Diego, but even if you got to make a change, even if you have to make a change, it's five hours. So Rich could could get up on Saturday morning with the time difference, gaining two hours. He could be back in his living room with his wife. I'm going to estimate before noon on Saturday, help her get everything together, do what they have to do, and then... They'd have the rest of the day, they'd have Saturday evening, and they could leave Sunday. So I don't want to hear about an excuse that you're flying to Istanbul on Sunday. The game is Friday, Rich. Come on now. Well, Rich, if it's up to me, and I'd be more like your wife. Just stay home, watch it on TV, and then if you got to go to Istanbul, nah. let go. But uh, nah, you, so you guys got this all wrong. He's an <laughs> SDSU grad, so he's already two steps ahead of both of you. Trust me. Uh, you guys yeah, are playing well. checkers. He's playing chess. Well, I don't know what airline he's on, but if he's on Turkish uh, Air and he's in business class, then I'm not feeling sorry for him. And if if he gets to go to the business class lounge at Istanbul Airport, he's a lucky, lucky man. So, see, I'm not feeling sorry for Rich in any way, shape, or form. I don't know what airline he's on, but if he's on Turkish Air and he's in business class, uh, then you're gonna you're gonna have a great flight. 
I know no, he's anyway, not a coach. I know anyway, Rich, just, I know just Rich ain't home. flying economy. I know Rich ain't Dude. flying coach. That's what I do know. Not that long of a flight. <laughs> you know? Appreciate the uh, Super Chat donation. Thank you very much. Light the beam. Uh, where does this win rank in the best Kings win of all time? Personally, this one is my favorite, but I'm a millennial. Well, it might be your favorite. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know what? The, the reality is it was the 83rd regular season game of the year. And coming up on Friday is the 84th regular season game. The Kings are not in the playoffs yet. Okay. And the reality is the Kings would not have been in the playoffs if they had kept the old system. Okay, they'd be out of the playoffs. So, listen, I think it's great for bragging rights. I've been reading a lot of things that erases the memory of last year. To me, it doesn't. You lost in the playoffs last year. You're not in the playoffs this year. Is it a big win? Yeah, I'm not going to undermine that. What happened last night was a big win. Is it nice to shut up the Warrior fans that were in the Golden One Center? Yeah, that's really nice. But to me, this was just, you know, it, it, I still think if you don't win on Friday, especially now with Zion Williamson, in my opinion, this has not been a successful season. That's just me. Well, I, I think just for me, I mean, I realized it didn't have a uh, – in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a big game at all. But for me personally, the joy, the sheer joy of beating the, the Warriors and slapping them down uh, – you know, it probably ranks higher than it should, but I don't care. And Jerry, I borrowed one of your lines. I said Clay Thompson on the post game show. I said, as Jerry Reynolds like to say, Clay is a dead horse. And I hate to say that because I love him as a person. Yeah. I think he's just a consummate professional. I mean, every time we talk to him, I just am left with, wow, what what a what a what a professional. And he's always polite. He's always saying thank you. And uh, and he said he's he's been a hell of a player, but it's just not there anymore. He's been it's great bad. for that city too. Bad. It's just really sad. I mean, the guy's a Hall of Famer, and, you know, we saw him at his greatness, and when he was just one of the elite half-dozen best players in, in the world, which he was, you know, because he, he was a defensive stopper, not just a great shooter. But so, yeah, sad, but it's – the good days are over. Happens to the best of them. Hopefully he's willing to take a little bit of a cut in a lesser role and find a team where he can make a difference, maybe on the court and more importantly in the locker room. Yeah. Well, the, the warriors and I were going back and forth here, but their windows closed. It's, it's closed yeah. and it's closed because we just talked about one guy and it's closed because Steph Curry is not Steph Curry anymore. And what a run. I mean, Jerry and Ryan, let's talk about this for a minute. Where do you put them in historical conversation of best teams ever? I mean, they got to be in the conversation, right, Ryan? Yeah, they absolutely do, Grant. Um, I've lived through the Jordan Bulls. I've lived through, obviously, the Lakers and now the Warriors. Um, you know, the Jordan Bulls, I think, are the best team that I've ever seen. But in my generation, the the Warriors, the Steph Warriors, the Clay Warriors, they changed basketball more in my lifetime. And, um, you know, it's more three centric. It's more team basketball. So I, I think they're right behind to me, the Bulls. Yeah, well, I, I think the Bulls are the, the gr greatest team I've seen. I mean, and of course. They didn't shoot the three like they do now, but defensively they were just stifling. You know, I mean they. they uh, so yeah, I've got the Bulls right at the top, and and you know there's, there, you could go through different eras. I mean, obviously the great Celtic teams of, of Bird, Mikhail, Parrish, that group, Showtime Lakers, uh, but I think the Golden State Warriors deserve a position to be right in there you know, with the very best and yeah. not just the four championships. And I've said this, and nobody agrees with it, but I don't care is that the season they won 73, uh, the, they didn't win the championship, but since they've won four championships, there'll never be another team win more than 73 games. And, and that's, wow. a, you know, there'll be another champion this year. There'll be another champion the next year and the next year, but there'll never be another 73 win that's team. And especially the fact that they won four. Well, especially the way, uh, you know, coaches use their lineups and everything else. Now, Fosters and Paws, they're a group of passionate animal advocates, and they're looking for donors, fosters, uh, and adopters. Uh, they have puppies available for adoption. Just go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. They do great work. 
And uh, I put out on my social media at Grant Napier Show, an event that they have coming up this weekend. So check it out, fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. They do fabulous, fabulous work. Yeah, there, there won't be. I'm with you on that, the 73 wins. That's just not going to happen anymore. And I look at, you know, you talk about that Bulls team. They they did it. I mean, it was so fun going to – I, I still think to this day, Jerry, and we were blessed to go to so many great buildings, but the Michael Jordan era before they moved into the United Center, the old Chicago Stadium, <laughs> that was as good of as an atmosphere as I'd ever, ever experienced. That really was. That was – I mean, you know, you had to be there to understand it. But what a, what a marvelous oh. atmosphere, an old building. And, and boy, and, uh, of course, Michael and the boys uh, put on a oh, show. Boy. Hey, Ryan, Frank Layden back then was the coach of the Utah Jazz, and he called the walk from the bus to Chicago Stadium, the bus to the locker room at Chicago Stadium, the toughest 10 yards in basketball. And Jerry and I <laughs> always used to laugh about that because it, it was in one of the worst areas of the city. And then you had to walk down steps to get to the locker room. But Frank Layden, I love that, the, the, the walk from the bus to the locker room at Chicago Stadium, the toughest 10 yards, Ten yards. in basketball. And Ryan, no, we, 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 big, big we, game we territory. Share, Jerry, we could share a lot of Frank Layden stories. He was so he was a joy to be around. He really was. What a funny guy and a good coach, very good coach. Yeah. I mean, he was a lot tougher-minded than people realize. But, but I know Jerry Sloan uh, – you know, always tells Frank Layden stories and uh, and about how good a coach he thought he was as well. Jerry, I would think to walk back from the locker room to the bus was the toughest 10 yards in basketball because you normally got your ass kicked as you were walking up the stairs and you had to think about, gee, good thing we're getting the hell out of here, you know? Yeah, I was going to say that's one of the great memories for me. My first uh, game I coached in in the arena. We won. We won. We beat, beat them in overtime and, uh, yep. you know, and. Roddy McRae had a good game, right? Yeah, he did. I, I had a word with Michael. I was, people always said you talked. I have talked to him some since, but I always remember during the game, I was kind of in the, got in the way a little bit. He had made a shot, and he said, get the hell out of the way, coach. <laughs> and so I said, <laughs> you know, I don't want to say exactly what I said to him. But uh, so so anyway, that's how we got to know one another. <laughs> The, the, re, the reason why I remember Rodney McRae is we had him on the post game, and Rodney uh, had one of the driest sense of humors. And, and Rodney was the type of guy, Rhino, that looked like he was in a bad mood every single day of his life. He just had that look, <laughs> and he kind of mumbled when he spoke. But he was one of the great guys. Rodney, to this day, Jerry, is still one of my favorite players that I've ever been around. I love being around Rodney McRae. Terrific, what a great guy. Play, and a terrific player. He was a very yeah. good player. You know, won a championship in college, third pick yep. in the draft, the whole bit. But uh, yeah, Rodney, Rodney make uh, Keegan Murray seem cheerful. So, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. And, and, and Ryan, he was back in the old days. You, Rodney McRae had a, uh, a a big base, and he played with his back to the basket. And Jerry, uh -huh. to this day, he still had some of the best low post moves I've ever seen. Oh yeah, he had the big rear end. He put put that rear end on him. They couldn't get around. I mean, the guys he just pin them back there. Yeah. You know, and, uh, <laughs> but yeah. anyway, it's always fun to reminisce. But yeah, I got to put the bulls up there too. All right, so let's fast forward to Friday. You know, you, you you're going to have to beat this team at some point. I mean, if you played it 82 times, they wouldn't win all 82 games. Uh, Sacramento's got to feel pretty good. They have an extra day of rest. They they understand that this team's kicked their ass five times. Um, they understand that they're going to be shorthanded and maybe even shorthanded and more if Ingram's not. First of all, I don't believe Brandon Ingram's going to be 100. percent So I'm just going to go on record and say I don't I don't think that's possible for him in 72 hours to go from what I saw last mm -hmm. night to being 100. percent So yeah, you know, you know I think we have to be realistic about this. Um, but you got to do it. Ryan, they still haven't done it, even with key members out of the lineup this year. So I'll believe it when I see it, I guess, is the mantra that I'm going with. Yeah, I think uh, we went with the same thing last night because the Warriors have Steph Curry, but I'm with you, Grant. Um, but the thing about this Kings team, it's like, you know, if it's going to be one of those games where they're there, you know, in the first five, 10 minutes, if they're going to be around, because they come out attentive, you know, they're in their trading buckets or getting stops. So that will be a big thing that I look for right off the bat because the first four or five games got out of control fairly quick. Yeah, I, th I think the thing to look for real real early on is the defensive intensity because, uh, uh, you know, you may go out there and miss open shots. You you know, that's going to happen. But that 
but but what kind of shots are is New Orleans getting? You know, the Pelicans getting yep. the easy open looks, or are they really having to work for their field goals? Now they may have to work for them and make them, and the Kings have easy ones and miss them, but that'll still tell you how the thing's going. And Ryan, dribble penetration has killed the Kings against the Pelicans. They're able to get wherever they want to and then kick out. And, you know, we even saw that last week. They break down the defense. They make three or four passes on the perimeter. That's the one thing the Pelicans do unbelievably well. They make that extra pass, and it's boom, boom, and it goes faster than the defense. But it normally starts because they're able to beat you off the dribble. Yeah, the Kings, uh, we're not expecting them to have perfect on-ball defense, but I think we can look for the expectation to at least drive them to certain spots in the floor if they are going to get by you, so that way you have some help. Um, but I do think, like Jerry said, with the what I saw last night with the Kings defensively looking at those matchups and kind of targeting, I expect a little of the same in that pressure uh, it hasn't been there against New Orleans, not one time this year. And to me, that's a team that if you can do it to the Warriors, you can probably do it to New Orleans as well. Yeah, I think that's a key. I mean, look right away. Uh, what kind of ball pressure are you, you know, are you in front of them and you staying in front of them and making them turn, you know, to get down the floor? Uh, just the little things. Uh, if the Kings are doing that, I think they've got a, a real good chance to win. It's just pressure on the ball, pressure on the ball. Yeah, and, see, I, uh, I disagree with you a little bit, Ryan, about what yeah. you just said. Uh, I, I don't think this team – and, and I, I'm going to go back to when we had Larry Kruger on the show two days ago. Larry hit everything right on the head, and mm -hmm. he talked about that this is an old team – with a couple of young players that aren't ready for the prime time. He talked about Steph Curry's not right. He talked about Klay Thompson and, and, and being very long in the tooth. He talked about Wiggins not going to be a factor. He hit it on every single thing. This Pelicans team is more athletic. They don't have Klay Thompson on the floor playing that position. They have C.J. McCollum. C.J. McCollum's not going to go 0 for 10. I don't care how, who's on him. I don't care if you have five guys on him. He's not going 0 for 10. This is a different animal. The Pelicans went into uh, San Francisco and beat them, okay, the night after they came in and steamrolled Sacramento. So I, I don't know. I do think the Kings will play good defense, but I don't know if good defense is going to work against this Pelicans roster if they're able to just simply break down the defense, which they did last week against the Kings, same players on the floor, biggest game of the year. Now think about this. That was the biggest game of the year for Sacramento and the Pelicans went in there and kicked their ass, but they did have Zion Williamson. So that that's the difference. One quick thing to keep in mind. I'm still paying attention to the Pelicans injury report to see if Alvarado shows up. He kind of tweaked his ankle foot last night. He played through it, but you talk about penetration and speed. He does that for their second yep. unit. He's not on there today. I would say that. He was not he on was there not, today. Not on there today. I looked before we started the show. Yep. Zion's already on there as being out, but he's not on there. Yeah, and he's he's a real factor defensively, too. You know, he's a guy that really makes it tough on uh, Fox. And uh, I think has always given uh, De'Aaron some trouble. He's De'Aaron's not used to uh, going against guys who are probably quicker than he is. <laughs> That's a good point. He is mm -hmm. quick. That's a very good point. Hey, I want to tell you about uh, Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. They are a full-service hospital. They do it all. And when your pet needs urgent care, they are available. Again, they are in Auburn, but they serve the Foothills, Roseville, and the greater Sacramento area. And again, they've got the most modern technology. They have the best in uh, pain management protocol, dentistry. They do you know, orthopedic surgery. Again, Urgent care, when your pet needs to be seen, they are available. That's Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. So I, I I think it's probably, would you say it's good for both teams right now to have the extra day off? I mean, would you if you're Sacramento, would you rather just be playing tomorrow if you had your druthers based on what we saw from Ingram and, you know, the other, the, the turned ankle, as you said? I mean, or do you think it's good, Jerry, to have the extra day right now? I think it's good to have the extra day because I think you want your, your starters are going to have to play huge minutes. And so, uh, and, and I'm, and I'm sure it's good for the Pelicans as well with the injuries and giving Ingram more time, but I, I do think the rest is good for the Kings. I think it's, uh, yeah, I agree with you there. And I think it benefits the Kings on the backside too, because the Pelicans have to think we should have been the six seed. And now we're looking at being out of this yeah. thing all together. I'll be surprised. If the Kings do not play an A game on Friday, that will surprise me. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're going to play very well. 
And I think at the end of the game, we're going to have to be talking first and foremost about the Aaron Fox. Yes. And I understand that there's there's a lot of other parts to this, but I still think in this game, we're, if, if the Kings are winning, I think we're going to start off by talking about the Aaron Fox. I really do. Well, he's the you know he's the most talented player, and and you know he he's got to come up big just like uh, McCollum or Ingram does for them. And uh, but I, I agree with you, Grant. I, I think the Kings are going to bring bring a, a really good game at him. May not be good enough. That's what we don't know. But I think they're going to bring a good game, and if they get beat uh, playing their best, is not then that's fine. That's fine. Exactly, yeah. Jerry. Exactly. Uh, what about those T-shirts bringing back memories from the good old Jerry Reynolds show, and when we did those shows in the studio, huh? Yeah, sure did. I mean, my gosh, I, I, I I've got one hanging here. I haven't, you know, I'm afraid to look at some of that stuff because it reminds me of, that I wasn't always old, you know. <laughs> so, right. But, oh but yeah, God. pretty pretty cool. And yeah, then, yeah. It looks like what do you got for it, Rhino? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rhino, Rhino, show us those shirts, man. Yeah, you want to see these bad boys? We've got the autographed Jerry Reynolds original. That one's a pretty cool one. Yeah. And then, and these are all going to be framed as well. We're going to have a specialist iron them out because we don't want to do it ourselves. No. There's autographs no. on these things. After no, all. no. Um. This is Larry Bird and Jerry right here signed on this shirt. Perfect condition. Absolutely gorgeous. One of a kind. And then you've got Jerry and Tizzy. Bless his heart. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, you know, I didn't even remember doing that. And uh, yeah. I'm surprised you remember what you had for lunch at Bennett's today, to be honest with you. Well, another couple of hours, I probably won't. But uh <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be good to about six, you know, once I eat. <laughs> hey, remember New Works Plumbing because they've got a fix for you for your plumbing needs and repairs. Just go to SacServicePlumbing.com or the numbers on your screen. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fix for you. So, Rhino, uh, explain to the fans how this is going to work in terms of those shirts. Yeah, we are just about to go live with the auctions, and uh, they're going to be linked. Uh, we'll have links here on the show when we're live, but also we'll put links on Grant's website. You can go to the website. It's a third-party bid. Now, each shirt comes with a special experience. One of them is uh, Digital Time with Grant. You get to be one-on-one -on -one with him, private forum, not going public. If you want to be a broadcaster, what a better opportunity to pick his ear. If you yeah. want to talk Kings, hockey, whatever it may be, Grant's going to be there for you. Second experience, you get to play some golf with uh, me and one of your other friends. You can bring somebody else at Valley High Country Club this summer. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. a pretty cool one. That is a yep. cool one. And then the last one is um, actually courtside with me at a Stockton Kings game and dinner at Bennett's beforehand. Just like and Gary I wanna, and I were there for lunch. And I want to give a special thank to uh, Mark Cholas. He was a former co-worker of mine at Channel 31, and he did a lot of stuff behind the scenes for the Jerry Reynolds show. Uh, and Mark reached out to me. I, I forgot we had these shirts and he said, Napes, you know what? Remember those shirts? So I got these shirts. I went through them. I don't need them. He goes, you know, maybe you could uh, use them on your show. And I said, Mark, thank you very much. So I want to thank Mark Cholas, uh, who uh, worked with me for many, many years at Channel 31 and did a lot of work with uh, the Jerry Reynolds show and the Kings when we televised the games back then. So a big thanks to uh, Mark Cholas. No doubt. And yeah. you know the other people I want to thank really quick? Oh, go ahead, Jerry, and then I'll do it. No, no, I was just thinking, you know, of the digital time with Grant. I mean, I think what an op opportunity it would be for some Giants fan, football Giants fan. That yeah. Talk to Napes. They can go back through the history of the damn game. He can tell you. <laughs> and I'll get Jim Stamos on that call too, Jerry. <laughs> or or it could be a Cowboy fan, and they can make Grant no, no, go no. through the history no, no, of the no, Cowboys. No. That, no, if you read the fine print on the thing, oh. there's no book on the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, okay, got it. Well, speaking of the fine print, I do want to say this, and I want to thank all of our audience that's been here this season, last season. One thing you know that we don't do, we don't ask for Super Chats. We appreciate them. We don't ask you to donate um, to get comments read. That's not how we do things. But once in a while, we do special things like this for the channel 
proceeds are going to go to the channel to bring us content yep. like this upgrade grant and then also for our wonderful guests so please help us out if you are interested in those really cool pieces and experience we appreciate that thank you ryan jerry yes. uh it should be a lot of fun we'll talk to you at halftime on friday and i again i i just have a feeling the king's going to play a very good game on friday will it be good enough i mean i, I that i don't know i don't have a crystal ball but i i will be very surprised if when Ryan and me are doing the post game show, we're talking about how the Kings did not play well. I, I don't see that scenario. I think they will play well. I do too. I, I mean, I am cautiously optimistic. I know who they're playing, the history, but I think this team is going to go in there with some confidence and the defense is maybe going to make it tougher on these guys. Finally. Yep. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate you. Thank you guys. Thanks, yep. Jerry. Uh, Ryan, looking forward to uh, Friday with a full lineup. I also want to let uh, everyone know that I will be on in about 20 minutes over on Listen app. Uh, yeah. You can get the app, whether you're on Apple, whether you're on Android. And I take phone calls. It's basically like a radio show on the Internet. Yep. It's called Listen app. Very easy to navigate on your phone. And we take calls. And I'm going to be doing that in 20 minutes. It's a lot of fun. Get over there. Wait, what's today, Grant? What's today? Today's Wednesday. Open Forum Wednesday. Open Forum Wednesday. You and I yes. had some fun back in the day. Oh, on boy. Open Forum Wednesday. Yeah, we did. You always you gave me some great ones. And you still, to this day, have been uh, one of the uh, disappointing moments in the history of my life. Oh, gosh. When you uh, asked me, you know, who was number seven, and I got the answer wrong. And it was my dad's uh, college football coach and the great Hall of Fame center, Mel Hine. Hunt. And uh, to this day, that plagues me. And I will, I will take that to my grave. And I've apologized uh, to my dad many times. My dad would be so disappointed in me. So thank you for giving me one of the, the worst moments of my life. Grant, uh, you know what? I had to repay the favor because, you know, I almost wasn't even ever on this show when I said you went, you were from Syosica, Manuka, New York on our first podcast. So, oh anyways, gosh. hey, really quick before we want to get out of here, speaking of the auctions, we want to give a huge thank you to Envision Web Design. That's right. Go hit them up at 916 905 Four two nine three. Max and his team are at the cutting edge of web design. Do you have a website already? Great. Do you want it to be more functional? Give Max and his team a call. One thing they take huge pride in is customizing every experience to each customer. And Grant can speak for it. I can speak for it. Yeah, Max, Max is, is great. great and always been there when wow. we needed it. So huge thanks to New Vision or Envision Web Design, 916-905-4293. Thank you, Max. And thank you for the uh, Super Chat donation. We greatly appreciate thank it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much. And again, Max, if you're watching, we appreciate you very much. And thank you for all the work you've done. Ryan, uh, two days left. Going to be a lot of fun. And we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I'll do a show tomorrow. I'm not sure what time. And We'll do kind of a preview and we'll, uh, we'll have some fun with that. But to everyone else, thank you for your support and uh, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. All right. And we always appreciate to, that. And get over uh, to Listen App right now. Yeah. Get to Listen App. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.